So, dear uh, brothers uh, in Christ, so last week uh, we studied about the class of uh, church. So, uh, we have seen uh, what uh, is the real meaning of uh, church. How uh, in the gospel age, God has been selecting the true church from the world. So, we have seen the group called as Q, that is the hypocrites, you see. And uh, we have studied the group of P, the believers. But above all, there is a group called as M, that is M and N, that is the followers of Christ. So among all these, uh, who is the true Christian whom God is seeking, if you see, uh, Devatan, it is, uh, you see, the followers of Christ. It is good to be a believer, but it is not always good to stay as a believer. So we need to come one step ahead. You see, uh, not be of just a called group, but uh, come one step ahead and become of the chosen class. You see, that means become a faithful follower of Christ. So, uh, we have elaborately seen the difference between a believer and a follower. Can anybody tell me? Uh, Sahaja Bhadar, can you tell me what is the difference between a believer and a follower? Any one difference you can tell me? Uh, yes, brother, a believer uh, normally used to believe, but follower used to practice something. Okay, <clears throat> good, brother. So, practice something, follow the footsteps of Jesus. Okay. Uh, Stephen, brother, how about you? Do you remember any scriptures which shows the difference between a believer and a follower? Mm. I'll give you a clue. Tell me, sir. Book of Romans. It comes in Book of Romans. Yes, for whom he did foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to his image. Uh, that's also there. To be faithful. That, he, that they should be faithful and uh, they should have the divine character. And that is following him. It is not that we simply follow. I think the following is ultimately being led uh, by the Christ to be faithful to his calling. Okay, but apart from that, that mm. was a very good verse. Uh, mm. There's one more verse in Romans 12, 1. If, if you can read, it will be very kind. One minute, over. Mm. Mm. Oh, can someone read? I need to take the scripture. One minute, one minute, one minute. Okay. Sahaja Buddha, if you're ready with the Bible, you can read Romans 12, 1. Yes, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and those proper worship. Very good. This is a true and a proper worship. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So, many people, you see, they try to live a Christian life, but actually as per the Bible, you see, it's just not sufficient to just go to the church on Sunday with the Bible and come back. You see, we need to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. That means day-to-day -day life, we need to lead a life which is of sacrifice. Sacrifice means what? That which cost us something, you see, that which is precious to us, we need to lay down at the altar of our Lord, you see, as a sacrifice for the Master. So, we saw this one very clearly where Jesus, you see, once turned to the crowd which were following him and he told the conditions of the discipleship. Do you remember? What did Jesus turn to the crowd and tell them? If any man wants to be my disciple, what did Jesus uh, tell them to do? Come, take up the cross and follow me. Very good. So, deny yourself, first thing. Second thing, take up the cross. Third thing, Follow him. So, first thing is that uh, deny yourself means deny all your aims, ambitions, everything, interest. Uh, you see? So, the preferences, likes, all those things are there. So, this thing has to be denied for Christ's sake. Then, carry the cross. Uh, take up responsibility for Christ's sake. Uh, you see? That means the first preference in life should be given to our master. Then, follow the footsteps of Jesus. 
a sacrificial way. So this is what uh, we saw the example of uh, uh, Jesus healing 10 lepers. But uh, did all the lepers turn back, uh, uh, came back to Christ to, to, to give gratitude to God? How many people came back? Sahaja Brother, how many of the lepers came back? Only one. Only one. And who was that? One man. Was he a uh, Israel or was he a Samaritan? Um, Samaritan? Yes. Correct. He is a Samaritan. That means he was not in much uh, close contact uh, with the Jewish people. So, yet uh, he showed the gratitude. But the original Jewish people, those who had received all the blessings, uh, they were so careless that they were just... Uh, eager to go to their home. This is the condition of the Christian today. Everyone to, wants to receive blessings from the Lord. Of course, the Lord is there always to bless. There is no doubt. But what about we giving ourselves to the Lord? You see, everybody thinks that if we give you know, amount of you see, fund or money to God, that is sufficient. No, but then, So, therefore, we saw that uh, whether we want to be the followers of Christ or whether we want to be the believers of Christ, the Bible says, thus, one who wants to be the follower of Christ, you see, these are the people whose consecration, or what you say, that uh, whose immersion in Christ is accepted. See, Jesus from birth, he was a godly child. There was no doubt. He lived a godly life. He had that godliness in him. But yet, you see, though Jesus was very... You see, living a uh, life which is very close to God, obedient, yet uh, he symbolized, uh, you see, his uh, consecration to God, his sacrifice to God in a water immersion, a water baptism. So well, it is that time that God gave him the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not receive the Holy Spirit before that one, you see. But Jesus received the Holy Spirit at the time of baptism. The Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove. So similarly, God gives each and every person the Holy Spirit only when they walk obediently, when they decide to walk obediently, when they deny themselves, carry the cross and decide to follow Christ. That is the time that they immerse properly and symbolize it to God. You see? And that is the time that God uh, gives them the Holy Spirit. Let us read 2 Corinthians 1.22. Please read 2 Corinthians 1.22. Yes, 2 Corinthians 1.22. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Very good, brother. So, who has also sealed us with the Holy Spirit. You see, God has sealed us with the God's Holy Spirit. You see, and this is uh, like an earnest uh, of, uh, in our hearts. This is like a guarantee that our consecration is uh, accepted. So, as God uh, seals us, that means uh, he authenticates it, he accepts our consecration, He accepts our uh, consecration. So, dear brethren, so that is the time a person uh, becomes, uh, you see, a new creature. All old things are passed away. You see, behold, all things have become new. Uh, read, uh, Abhishek brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 5.17? Okay, bro. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, became new. Okay. Very good, brother. So, here uh, it says, uh, if uh, any man be in Christ, then he is a new creature. You see? And old things are passed away. We studied the subject of Christ, the seed of the woman. So, who is Christ? One who lives like Christ, the seed of the woman, the anointed, you see, the anointed, uh, you see, uh, Christians, you see, these are called as new creatures. You see, old things have passed away, they become new. Okay. Now, when God gives us the Holy Spirit, you see, that is the time 
you see they become new new means what many people uh, think that they are born again so many people uh, claim them to be born again christians okay now let us take some time and study about this born again christian jesus told about this born again christian to nicodemus you see now where did he tell to nicodemus sir john 3 5 john 3 5 uh sahib brother can you read john 3 5 no yes brother jesus answered very truly i tell you no one can enter the kingdom of god unless they are born of water and the spirit you see so jesus clearly said to nicodemus nobody can enter you see nobody can be of the part of the heavenly part of the kingdom until they are born of the water you see and spirit so you see so many people think that uh, oh if we need to go to heaven you see uh, we need to be born of the spirit uh, you see born of the water means uh, born in baptism so born of the spirit means what uh, you see everybody thinks that uh, once we are anointed with the holy spirit uh, that is the time we are born of the spirit uh, okay now jesus answers uh, this clarification to nicodemus and gives very clear clarity as to what it means to be born in the spirit you see what actually happens and how the person will actually be if he is born of the spirit where is it given it is given in the same chapter verse 8 you see the same chapter verse 8 Jesus clearly tells how a person who is born of the spirit shall be let us read verse 8 uh sai ji brother please read verse 8 also the wind blows wherever it pleases you hear its sound but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going so it is with everyone born of the spirit ah you see how is everyone who is born of the spirit jesus gives very clearly saying you see ha huh? example of a wind the wind blows you see where it listen you see we can listen to it we can hear the sound but we cannot tell from where it comes because we can't see the wind you see we can't see from where the wind is coming and from where it is going we can't see jesus in the end it says so is everyone that is born of the spirit so one who is born of the spirit as per the scripture he clearly tells he will be like the wind we can't see them they will come and go you see they will be invisible like the wind you see wind yes you all know is the wind visible no it's invisible can we see the wind no but we can feel it you see we can't see from which direction it came which direction is going you see but we can feel it so similarly it says every person who is born of the spirit is like the wind now imagine apply this one to the people who claim themselves to be born again christians are they born again christians just put a question mark and think are they like wind that we can't see them from where they are coming and we can't see them from where they are going out are they like wind no dear brethren no we can clearly see them in the flesh so that clearly proves that the people who claim themselves to be born again christians the scriptures deny that one the scriptures doesn't agree for it then who is a born again christian dear brethren we have a beautiful example of our master jesus proved at his resurrection how a born again person will be we all know jesus died and was resurrected on the third day you see and jesus was resurrected in his spiritual nature he was not resurrected in the same flesh you see he was not resurrected in the bodily manner as human beings were but he was resurrected as a spirit being and you all know very well so many times in the bible says that disciples were in the close room 
were in the locked room. But suddenly, Jesus came in between them and stood in between them and said, Peace be unto them. Why? Because how can a person come when all the door is locked? Isn't it? Can a person come if the door is locked? Tell me. Can anybody come inside if the door is locked? Are you all there? No, brother. No, brother. Huh? See. No one uh, can come. Very good. Uh, let us see. Hmm. Luke 24, 36. You should have that one, brother, one minute. You can read Matthew, brother. Uh, that's more clear. Let us read Matthew, one minute. One minute, please. John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20 with that. John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. Who can read? Anybody can read? On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the door locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Ah, you see? Uh, read, brother. Please read. Uh. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sides. You see? The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Very good. Thank you, brother. So it says, you see, when the doors were shut because of the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in midst of them. How can a person come when the door is closed? Surely a human being you see, with his flesh and body, cannot come into the room when a door is closed. It is only one who is born of a spirit, as a spirit being, can come inside and go. You see, remember, you see, so many angels, they came when the door was locked. Gabriel appeared to Daniel. You see, again, he appeared to Mary. When? Or did he come into the door and knock it? No. So, this is the way and this is the time that one will be born of the spirit only at death not uh, before the death you see and Jesus clearly proved uh, to the disciples uh, saying uh, you see that how a uh, born of the spirit shall be there okay then uh, what is the meaning of the verse which uh, Jesus told to the Nicodemus that until you are born again you can't see the kingdom of heaven. That word born that is given in the English Bible, you see, it is from the Greek word ginaio. That means begotten or born. It can be used either way. When the term is used for a female, the word begotten is used. And when the word, you see, is used for male, the born is used. Why? I'll tell you. You see, the women are the people who beget and give birth to child. You see, the men don't give birth to child. You see, so it is a woman who beget the child in the womb and then give birth to the child. Now, does it happen immediately? No. You see, before a child is born, he has to be first begotten. And that begotten process is there. And after begotten, you see, after the conception, the child has to grow in the mother's womb for a particular period of nine months. Then only the child can be born. So similarly, Jesus uh, here is explaining the same thing. Now let us read these verses again. Let us see. Uh, somebody uh, read verse 5 first and verse 4 next. John 3rd chapter, verse uh, 5 first. And verse 4 next. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, are you there? Yes, brother, I will read it. Uh, brother, please read it first. Chapter 3, verse 5 first. John, Jesus answered, 
Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. You see, unless they are born of the water and spirit. Now, Nicodemus gets confused. Master, how can I be born again at this age? Do you think that I should go to my mother's womb and be born again? You see? See, read verse 4, brother. Emmanuel, brother, please read verse 4 also. Verse 4. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Uh, you see, I can't enter the mother's womb at this second time and be born. That is the time Jesus gives a complete clarity what he actually meant to be born again. Read verse 6, mother. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Very good. A super translation, mother. Which is the translation? And I will. Ah, excellently there given. You see, read it again, brother. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but ah. the spirit gives birth to spirit. Ah, flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. What is the meaning of this one? That means, if you are in the flesh, then only can you uh, what? Uh, beget uh, flesh. You see? That means what? If somebody has to be born in the flesh, first of all, that person has to be conceived, begotten in the flesh. Then only he can be born. Isn't it? There is a process now. Just like that, it can be somebody be born. No, there is a process. That is what Jesus is explaining. See, for some person to be born in the flesh, there is a process now. Similarly, if somebody has to be born in the spirit, in the spiritual nature, as a spirit being, there is a process. That is the process what Jesus is saying. Now what is the process? He that is born of the flesh is flesh. There is a process now. How do you born of the flesh? You don't magically come out of your mother's womb immediately. First of all, what happens? You see? There is a conception that happens, uh, you see, and that uh, conception happens in the mother's womb. Then the child is begotten and grows in the mother's womb for a period of nine months. Uh, the mother has to feed the child nicely, take care of it, uh, you see. Then only ultimately that child will be born. This is the same process. Now, as we take baptism, God anoints us with the Holy Spirit, which is begotten in us, which is there in this old creature. This Holy Spirit, the holy mind of Christ, will be in this old man, and that is the begotten process. But uh, is just begotten sufficient? No. As a mother has to take care of the child very, very carefully. Feed them very healthy food. Then only it will be born. Not immediately. After nine months. Similarly, once a person takes a baptism, complete surrender to God, that is the time God anoints them with the Holy Spirit. You see, they are... You see, sealed with the Holy Spirit. They are begotten of the Holy Spirit, not born. When are they born? Like a spirit being, invisible, come and go like wind. It is only after death in the resurrection. You see, Jesus clearly proved that one. Now why? Now why is it required and why is it necessary that we be resurrected as a spirit being? Why can't we go to heaven in the same body? No. We can't go to heaven in the same body. Read what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Abhishek, brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 15, 50? Abhishek, brother, you there? Yes, I will read. How many? 1 Corinthians 15, 50. You can read from the screen. <clears throat> 15, 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that 
Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither the, the corruption in not in corruption. See, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. You can't go to heaven in this flesh and blood. This body, human body, is only limited for this earthly life. So, if you need to live this earthly life and attain a heavenly life, you need to quit this body. Has Jesus quitted this body? You see, we can't go to heaven in the same body. We will study about this uh, spiritual body, human body in detail in the coming classes. Well. Anyway, it is the same way Jesus went. You see, the angels received him. They told no, the same Jesus as you're seeing, he'll come down the same way. You see, Jesus actually had three births. One first birth, when he was created by the Father, you see, he was with God. You see, that was the time that he was first had his birth. Second, when he was born through Mother Mary, through Mother Mary's womb on the earth. And the third birth was the resurrection from the dead, where he was laid in the grave and Jesus was resurrected. So Jesus had three births. See, dear brethren, a child gets conceived in the mother's womb, you see, and it develops. How does it develop? You see, it develops based on the feeding of the mother. If the mother takes good care of the child, nourishes completely healthy food, what will happen? The child will be healthy. If the child is not fed well, the child will become weak. It will be born weak. So similarly, when God gives us the Holy Spirit in a small portion, we need to develop it day by day. Be filled with the Spirit. We should not grieve with the Spirit. You see, we should daily attend to God's words. Listen to God's words and try to walk as Spirit. You see, therefore, the Bible says, God had kept this treasure, the Holy Spirit, in this human body. Read 2 Corinthians 4 7. Stephen Mother, can you read 2 Corinthians 4 7? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Not of us, that it should be of God. That is God's power. In this weak body, God has kept His Holy Spirit and given so much of power that this Holy Spirit, the Holy Mind, should overcome the world, man. But daily what will happen? <laughs> daily there will be a fight. The new man will tell, come let us go for the class. Time is up. The old man will tell, no need to hurry. We will go. No problem. Today we will take some rest. Today we will go attend some birthday party. Today we will go and attend some uh, marriage function. Give importance to all the worldly things. But the word of God, that is lay aside. No, no problem. We can listen to the YouTube. We can see later. Not sorry, no urgent. Yes, you see, this is how our old creature attracts us. You see, but what does the new creature tell? It will keep on fighting. No, 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 the, this things God doesn't like it. First preference should be given to God. That is a true Christian who sacrifices everything. But daily what will happen? You see, when these things come in our mind, there will be a fight in our mind. These all things happen inside, dear brethren. You see, inside our feelings the old man, the old man. You see, old man, new man, old man, new man. Sometimes it will be the old man himself will be winning. But uh, that won't be sufficient. Day by day, what should happen? New man should try to fight. Today, he has fought thousand times and fallen down means, okay, no problem. Tomorrow, he should uh, increase. He should just fight for 500 times and fall down. But as it keeps on going, what will happen? Ultimately, Instead of falling down, he will try to resist, stand, not winning. Winning is the last stage. So this will happen, dear brethren. Therefore, Apostle Paul clearly says about this warfare. Let us read Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Sajibudar, please read Galatians 5, 16 and 17. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not Gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever whatever you want. 
very clearly no na walk in the spirit be filled with the spirit if you if you walk in the spirit you shall never fulfill the desires of the flesh because the flesh will desire will ask you crave for it you have to fight there is a warfare inside us you know apostle paul told oh i have nothing good in me i am a terrible man i am not able to do what i want to do i am doing only things which my god doesn't like see roman 7 chapter 18 19 imagine brother can you read roman chapter 7 18 and 19 for i know what god what good itself does not dwell in me that is in my sinful nature for i have the desire to do what is good but i cannot carry it out for i do not do the good i want to do but the evil i do not want to do this is this i keep on doing you see very clearly you know it tells about us it is our mirror if you read this one we will come to know arre it is telling about us only now we are doing the same thing now you see there is nothing good in this flesh the holy spirit the holy mind always tells us to do the will of god but we don't know how to perform we want to love brethren we want to be fellowship with brethren we want to be close with brethren we want to express our godly love to them but we don't know how to do it why because there is nothing good in this flesh dear brethren so we need to fight we need to overcome apostle paul himself tells you see what he actually wanted to do he could not do it himself what he did not want to do that is doing it himself but you know apostle paul was not in this stage always he fought what was his fight first corinthians 9 26 27 first corinthians 9 26 27 uh, stephen brother can you read therefore i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight not as one that beat at the air but i keep under my body and bring it to so into subjection lest that by any other means when i have reached to others i myself should be a castaway see what is apostle paul i keep my body under i bring it to subjection i fight it you see he is not just leaving that oh i can't do let me sit like this only no 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 he is fighting i therefore i run not uncertainly you see when you are running the race how should you run the race just oh they told me to run let me run will anybody run like this one they will run to win the crown if somebody is fighting in a battlefield how will they fight will they fight just casually to receive the salary they will fight to win the war that is the way we need to fight and that is the way we need to run the race you see and how do we do it bring our body into subjection you see bring our body into control you see control of the new man tell and make the old body to listen to the new man and do only new man things you see but the old man won't allow but we should fight and overcome see what apostle paul at the last of his life second timothy 4 7 and 8 abhishek brother can you read second timothy 4 chapter 7th verse okay i'll read second timothy 4 7 8 I have fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith therefore here is laid for for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only or unto all them also that love his appearing okay I have fought a good fight of faith ha uh-huh. he has fought initially he told I can't do they treated okay i'll try it i'll do it at last it was successful this is how we win the crown so this is consecration this is christianity burn this is work out your salvation with fear and trembling this is 
salvation in Christ. Not just believing in Jesus, bed of roses, you go to heaven. No, 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 no. Huh? You see, so we have to be clothed in Christ likeness. Colossians 3rd chapter 8 to 10. Shaiji Buddha, please read Buddha. Colossians 3rd chapter 8 to 10. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, mm. which is being renewed in, in knowledge mm. in the image of its creator. Uh, see, put off the old self, put on a new self. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. Daily, why do we change the clothes? Eh? To look smart, to look neat, to smell good. You see? To be hygienic, clean. We put off the old man. Put on Christ. So, this won't happen magically. We need to put off the old cloth. Take the new cloth. Neatly wear it. And maintain neatness also. Therefore, you see... Dear brethren, the new man, such a new man that is developed into Christ, in death, they will be born in the spiritual nature. You see, dear brethren, therefore, you see, eh? what we studied, called we studied, chosen we studied, you see, and uh, faithful also is there. Not everybody who enters this race wins. Not who, everybody who fights wins. But we should fight to win. So, among the sacrificing people, among the followers of Christ, you see here, among the followers of Christ, there are two groups. One will remain faithful to God until death, come what may. Let it be anything, any trial, they will pass it and be a successful, faithful overcomer, fighter. But the other people, they try to do it, but they are not able to successfully fight it. Hence, they lose the prize. But yet, they are in the race. You see? So, now you tell me, do we want to be faithful to God till death or not? Do we just want to be a casual Christian or do we want to be a faithful Christian? Tell me. It works. Yes, faithful Christians. Abhishek brother, Emmanuel brother, Stephen brother. Yes, faithful, 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 faithful Christian. Yes, faithful, faithful Christians. Christian. Very good brother. That is Christian. That is the true Christian in the sight of God. Now we need to attain that one. Read Revelation 17, 14. Stephen brother, please read Revelation 17, 14. These shall make war with the Lamb and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. See, they that are with him, they that are with Jesus, who are they? They are not all called. There's a stage. They came from the called stage. They next went on to the chosen stage, but ultimately they were faithful. The faithful are very important. Not the three classes will be selected. No, no, no. How did they come? They came from the call stage to the chosen stage to the faithful stage. So, being a Christian is to remain faithful to God until our death. A faithful follower. Not just a follower. Not just a believer. A faithful follower until death. This is the true church. Okay? So, next week, we will continue with another one important part. After that, we got another two parts also. We are going to see what actually makes this true Christian. Okay? We are going to see a lot of things from the scriptures and uh, uh, let us reason it out. Okay? Uh, has anybody got any doubts, any questions? We can ask. Anybody, any questions? Stephen, brother? Oh, thanks, brother. Thank you. Okay. Shaiji, brother? No, brother. Uh, Abhishek, brother? Yes. Uh, the name of Messiah. Yes. 
इन ओ मिद्रास में क्या लिखा है माने जो मसीह का नाम था वो प्री एग्जिस्टेंट में था मसीह का नाम जब ये सृष्टि नहीं हुआ था तो अनंत महिमा का सिंहासन महापवित्र स्थान अनंत वाचा का संदूक और मसीह यीशु का नाम वो नाम रूहों के रब के सामने था ओके okay, अभी आ, उसका जवाब हम देंगे उसका जवाब भी हम बाइबल से हम ढूंढ के पढ़ेंगे मगर फिलहाल आज जो क्लास हुआ है या आज तक क्लास हुआ है उसमें आप कुछ भी डाउट है क्या नहीं है नहीं है नहीं ओके ओके इसका अलग सा सब्जेक्ट है उसमें हम डिटेल से राज सर हाँ बोलिए अभिषेक बहुत जुस इंसाइक्लोपीडिया आप चलाइए और जुस इंसाइक्लोपीडिया में आ जाएगा ओके ओके और स्टडी करेंगे तभी हम चलाएंगे सभी देखेंगे ओके 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 इमेजिन ब्रदर यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस नो ब्रदर ओके देन एट लास्ट विल एंड विद अ प्रेयर इमेजिन ब्रदर कैन यू ऑफर अ प्रेयर 